Hi, so I've been using Flutter on the M1 MacBook Air and now on this M2 MacBook Air with 8 GB of memory <clears throat> for a while now. And uh, this is a project in which I'm also using Firebase. And so I just wanted to show you how this whole thing works out and how the ecosystem has evolved to support Apple Silicon at this point. I'm gonna start by doing a Flutter clean. And what this will do is it will just delete all the pre-built libraries that I have because I wanna show you from this, you know, from a clean slate, how long it takes to build these projects. Uh, notice that it has to do a lot of deletion on the Xcode side of things, and that becomes important later on when we rebuild it for iOS. Um, so problems have occurred because all the libraries and references are gone. I'm just gonna fix that with the pubget. So let me just do flutter pubget, and that will quickly resolve all, all these dependencies, and this will not take long. There you go, all the problems magically disappear. Right, we are ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and run it on the uh, Android emulator first. And let me just start it from here, the pixel emulator right here, and comes up quickly. This is uh, native now, as you can see, very fast, no problems at all. And let's just go ahead and run it first, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and run it, and it's gonna launch, it's gonna take about 20 seconds. And uh, by the way, if you want to install uh, the emulator, the best way to do that is just get the Android Studio. Uh, it'll come pre-configured, or you can configure your own uh, through Studio as well. And it's fast, it's accurate, and it uh, works just fine. Let me just show you some of the screens that make up this project while this is uh, trying to load up. And uh, as you can see, this thing has around, um, okay, well, I'll just do that later. It has already come up um, and it took about 20 seconds like I promised. And uh, it's a simple app as you can see. Um, if I just click here, it is now fetching the data from a Firebase backend, all right? So it's using the Firebase libraries and it works just fine. And uh, it's a quiz type of an application. If I just go here, it'll just give me all the questions one by one. Here we go, next and so on. Uh, correct answers and correct answers. And so, you know, it's, it's a reasonably sized app. Uh, it does have a cloud backend and everything works uh, perfectly fine as you can imagine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, shut this down over here and look at the activity monitor just to show you that the memory has not been stressed by this operation, right? So I have an 8 GB system and I'm still using about seven. There is a swap file of about one GB, but it has not slowed us down in any way. There is no big memory stress. The emulator itself, by the way, does take about 4.6 GB of memory. So that's the Android emulator. Um, it, it runs very fast as you have seen, but it does take a lot of memory, but it doesn't seem to hurt the development process. So let's just stop this here. And now let's run this on the iOS side of things. So I'm just gonna start up the iOS uh, simulator here. And that's gonna come up pretty quickly as well. And uh, should I just go ahead and run it? There we go. If I just go ahead and run it, it's gonna start building on that side. Now, this is going to take a rather long time, but there's a catch, so just hear me out. The first time you run it, and if you have libraries that depends on CocoaPods, because the Firebase libraries do run, depend on CocoaPods, it takes a long time because it has to build all those libraries. And so this thing is gonna take about three minutes uh, at this point of time. But if I have to rebuild it from that point onwards, it's still gonna take the 20 seconds that it took on the Android side of things. So this is the once only, but yes, it does take longer because it has to go through Xcode and it has to go through CocoaPods. Now, I do get questions about CocoaPods a lot as well, uh, whether they work on the Apple Silicon because it, this has been a bit of a sticking point for a while, but there is a solution now. Um, before I do that, let me just show you the screens. Um, so we, some of these screens are, are, are fairly small. The intro screen has about, what, 50, 60 lines of code. The quiz one is a fairly long one because this shows you, it does the randomization of the questions. Um, it does, you know, shows it to them. So it's about 300 lines of code. And then the quiz over screen is gonna tell you uh, what your score was and it is gonna give, assign you some stars and so on. So it's a fairly sizable kind of a product. And uh, now let's just talk about CocoaPods because it gives trouble to some people. If you go to the CocoaPods uh, website, it tells you to install, you know, using this command over here, the gem command. But don't do that because that's still not native and that will create problems when you start to use it. Uh, instead, what I would advise is use uh, brew install to do that, right? So if you go to the homebrew uh, website, it gives you the instructions to install CocoaPods from over there. Uh, the, you know, again, the command line is brew install CocoaPods, very, very simple. But as you can see, it does have local Apple Silicon uh, support and it's all stable at version 1.12 and so if you install using this uh, particular uh, method uh, you will not run into problems and CocoaPods will run, run absolutely fine. 
Now, if I go back to our build, it's still running. Like I warned you, the first time you do this, it's going to take around two minutes. So I'm actually going to, you know, trim the clip from this point onwards. I don't want you staring at the screen for three minutes. And let's come back when it's done. And we're done. And I'm running the app now. It took about uh, just over three minutes, like I had mentioned. It shows you at the end of the quiz whether you got it right or wrong. Um, so it's working absolutely fine on the iOS simulator as well, just like we saw on the Android side of things. Uh, and of course, because this is Flutter, because it's uh, loaded now, if I just go ahead and make some change into it, um, I'm just going to go to the main screen and uh, just say start again. As soon as I press save, um, it says again. So that's instantaneous. Also, if I were to stop this and maybe make one more change to this file, so make sure it's recompiled. And if I start to compile it again, um, this time it will not take three minutes. It's going to take only around 20 seconds, which is the same time as the Android version did. And so the trade-off is the Android emulator takes a lot more memory, uh, but the first build is, is faster. Uh, and, and on the iOS side, it takes a lot less memory, uh, but the first build does take three minutes. But after that, it's about the same, uh, even Steven. So you can develop on either platform. And of course, because it's Flutter, it doesn't even matter. You can develop on any one of the emulators and it works identically on the other one. That's the beauty of Flutter, of course. And that's why I love it so much. Um, so let it run this time around and just to show that it is faster this time and uh, it doesn't have to go into this whole song and dance routine of, of compiling all the Firebase uh, libraries. Um, so it will not take that long and uh, once it's run we will also run it on Chrome. So there you go 21 seconds uh, and it's up and it says again and again this time like we changed it. Uh, yeah, it's fetching from the Firebase before, no problems whatsoever. I could not get it to run on the Mac side of things, by the way, for some reason, I don't know, uh, even though the CocoaPod is working for iOS, but not on the Mac. Um, let's actually just try it in the end on the Chrome browser as well. I actually haven't tried this particular project on Chrome, so I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let's find out. Um, so yeah, it's connecting on Chrome now. I have not made any changes to the code, and uh, Chrome is just gonna come up in a second. And uh, I actually don't know how long that will take. Oh, that was actually fairly quick. That probably was the quickest build time. And yep, it works uh, just fine. And there's Flutter for you, right? So one code base, whether it's on the web or it's on iOS or on Android, works every time, works with external libraries, works with Firebase, works with the cloud service as well. And so, yeah, you can't really get a better, uh, in my opinion, experience than that. And the MacBook Air with 8 GB, works just fine for this particular development workflow and i hope uh, you found something useful in this uh, video and it uh, if you had any doubts about the machine and uh, thanks for watching